This Christmas in Ria Shack, we talk about a radio pioneer who supposedly made the first Christmas music broadcast and probably the first broadcast of radio music and speech for the general public and who sent the first voiceover radio. Who are we talking about? You'll find out next on Ria Shack. Hi everybody, I am Ria Jaram, N2RJ, a ham radio operator, and today we're going to talk about Reginald Fessenden, who was a famous and not so famous Canadian American radio engineer, and he was kind of also famous for having a bit of a temper too. But let's talk about his engineering achievements and why they're so special this Christmas. Of course, if you do like the content, please consider giving us a like and subscribing to the channel. This way you don't miss any more videos. I really appreciate it. And please tell your friends. Reginald Fessenden, he was born in Canada, specifically in Quebec in 1866. His father was a, a minister at the Church of England in Canada at that time. So they moved around a lot of different posts within the province of Ontario and as such he had a kind of religious upbringing. Eventually he looked to, to work in New York City with Thomas Edison. So he applied to Thomas Edison. Uh, he didn't have a degree or anything. He didn't have any formal education in electricity or anything and he wrote Thomas Edison saying, hey you know I don't know much about electricity but what if, why don't you give me a job? You know maybe I'll learn. And Edison said, well, cool, bro, but we already got a lot of people who apply and don't know anything about electricity. Not interested. Paraphrase into modern English. So anyway, after being rejected by Edison several times, Edison kind of like said, all right, you win. We give up. Let's see what you got. So Edison gave him a job and eventually he began to help to lay the foundation for the New York City electrical system. And um, it was quite interesting. He worked for Thomas Edison for a while. He then went to the laboratories in New Jersey. And then Thomas Edison kind of like fell into financial trouble. And then Edison had to like lay off most of his engineering staff. So out went Reginald Fessenden and he was out of a job. Well, you know, that, that kind of like opened new doors. He eventually... Um, he got a contract with the, the National Weather Service, the predecessor for the National Weather Service, which was the Weather Bureau. And his claim to fame was that he wanted to investigate the use of coastal stations in order to relay weather data. And um, what do I have here? I have myself my Kenwood on the weather frequency listening. So... Anyway, um, <laughs> so um, he was interested in using radio for weather purposes. He did a lot of that work and he was contracted and he kind of like, you know, he said, well, you know, I will do the work and I will get all the patents, but you can freely use my patents. And they said, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. And then eventually his boss tried to kind of like, you know, um, do one over on him and say, well, you know, yeah, we'll give you half the patents. And he was like, no, thanks. So he kind of left that. He worked with a number of other companies. and um, But his main area of work that he, he really became interested in was AM and specifically using an alternator for AM. So remember these days I talk about how you can get on AM and so today, radio technology has become so advanced, right? You can, you know, today AM signals are generated in software by a software-defined radio. And, of course, the traditional way to generate an AM signal, a rather continuous wave which you modulate AM onto, is that you have a oscillator that generates a carrier wave, and then you modulate that carrier wave. And that would be an electronic oscillator using either vacuum tubes or solid state devices like transistors. Well, back in the early days, a lot of things were not so electronic. In fact, a lot of electrical things were more or less mechanical. 
So it wasn't surprising that Fessenden wanted to create an AM signal using an alternator. Those of you who own a car, and I'm pretty sure that's most of you watching, will know that an alternator is a rotary mechanical device. And a rotary mechanical device that basically has a rotor and a stator coil, and it will you pass a current through, through one coil, and it would generate an electric current in the other coil. And that's how it works. That, in fact, is how a lot of modern generators are their alternators of course some you still have some permanent magnet generators and um, a lot of companies are kind of like heading back toward permanent magnet technology like for example tesla with its latest electric cars are using permanent magnet motors which also double as um, generators for regenerative braking so that now be a cool topic to cover sometime anyway so reginald fess and then he contracted with General Electric to develop an alternator that was able to produce up to 10 kilohertz. And that was a high frequency for them at that time. So they had to produce a, a, um, an alternator that, that rotated and would produce 10 kilohertz. But he was afraid that, you know, and there was a lot of fear at that time that going that high in frequency is going to cause the whole thing to break apart and disintegrate. Well, yeah, so eventually they put the whole thing in the ground with sandbags around it just, to, you know, just in case. Eventually he did um, do conduct some experiments with that and he was able to show that the alternator worked and unfortunately the power at output wasn't that high and amplification really wasn't that easy to do. So it kind of like, you know, but it fell apart and it, but that was the foundation for more of his experiments. So up until about the 1930s, Lee DeForest, who invented the vacuum tube, um, he conducted a set of test broadcasts at that time. And he was demonstrating the possibility of organized radio broadcasting, meaning like, you know, your regular radio station that would be transmitting to the public and having information, music and such. Well, um, Reginald Fessenden is actually credited with the, the first transmissions in um, 1906. So um, there are a lot of people who think that he did that. He actually, in 1906, he transmitted some of the, um, the first transmissions. And the theory behind this was that he transmitted Christmas music, Oh Holy Night, spiritual Christmas music, not, you know, not like jingle bells and and all of this secular Christmas music, but spiritual, religious Christmas music, because, you know, he was a religious man who grew up in a religious family. And um, so he was, he's probably the first Christian broadcaster, come to think of it. You know, I have friends who are Christian broadcasters, and <laughs> that, would be, that would be amazing if he was. Anyway, so um, how, how quickly things go back to their roots, because, you know, on shortwave today, most of the broadcasters are Christian broadcasters. So he actually sent this out on Christmas Eve, and he, um, well, it is alleged that he, he set out this transmission on Christmas Eve celebrating Christmas, and, you know, those of you who believe in Christmas, you believe that it is the birth of Jesus Christ, so obviously the theme of the music would be the Christmas, right? Of course, if you celebrate a secular Christmas, hey, that's okay, you know, I celebrate Christmas in all different ways. So, um, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everybody. Anyway, the, um, the thing about these broadcasts is they captivated the imagination of people. And Fessenden wanted to do this as a public service, not only to, you know, people in, within the land, like, um, you know, within the continental United States on dry land, but... Also, like ships at sea, because they had the shipboard radios, and these shipboard radios were able to receive AM signals. They were able to receive amplitude modulation, because a radio receiver really is a simple device. It, you know, it has a rectifier detector, and it's able to receive radio signals that way. So, allegedly, Reginald Fessenden did these broadcasts, and... Um, he was credited as being the first. Of course, he later went on and 
you know, like a lot of other inventors, they, they fall out with people, people try to make money and all that stuff, but we're not going there. The real reason I mentioned this is that last year I found out that a radio amateur, now the original transmissions were actually somewhere up in New England, right, on the coast in New England. And it makes sense because a lot of ships were up there as well. There is a radio amateur, WA1ZMS. He got a Park 5 experimental license. So the FCC allows you to have a license for experimental transmissions where you can do transmissions that are purely to test new things and experiment and such. And also you can do historical reenactment with them. As a matter of fact, the original um, FM Armstrong Tower has experimental transmissions from time to time. Let me know if you want to do a video about that. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll go down there. It's not that far. So WA1ZMS does the recreation every Christmas Eve. I think he's done it for how many years? 2006 onward. Uh, Might have been later than that. Last year, I kind of found it because it was mentioned on Reddit and uh, all people said, hey, this was so cool, but a lot of people couldn't receive it. So what I did, since I'm such a low band nerd and a low band DXer and I love the low bands, the transmissions were on 486 kilohertz. I took my software to find radio and I live streamed the whole thing. So people who couldn't hear it themselves were able to hear it. It was weak, but it was audible and that's all that matters. So this year, I'm probably going to do the same thing. The only thing is, though, my schedule might be a little altered because this year I have my um, my media duties at my church. So I'm a media director at the church. So I, I basically have to be there for the live stream. But once that's done and I'm back home, um, I will have the live stream up and running. I'll have it on YouTube and I'll probably have it on Facebook as well. We'll see. Last year it got picked up by the Washington Post and they did a really nice article about it. I'm really thankful to them. And I hope they, um, you know, they, they see it again this year. It'll be a lot of fun. So that is the story of Reginald Fess. And then, you know, he had quite a temper. They gave him a couple medals and he was like, I don't want those things. They're gold plated. They're not gold. The old ones are solid gold. You know, I, I think you call these people what? Prima Donnas? But he was brilliant. But he wasn't really as much recognized as a lot of other of these radio pioneers like Edison and, well, not Edison. He's a, fr- okay. And not a lot of these other radio pioneers, but um, he was kind of just, you know, he really wasn't that well known. And he had personality quirks. You know, a lot of these people have personality quirks like my favorite one, Nikola Tesla. Um, he, he had a lot of personality quirks and, um, you know, and the ones who are like normal are like Thomas Edison. He was kind of like, yeah, he really wasn't all that much of an inventor, I suppose. You know, that, that's what people say. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Christmas episode of Ria Shack. Thank you very much. We're almost at 1K. Tell your friends, like, and subscribe. And I will see you all next time. This is N2RJ. Be good. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And I'll see you around next time. 73, keep on hamming. See ya.